Hey everyone, this is David Pike, the Motor City Mechanic. In today's video, we're going to be working on the interior of my Ram pickup truck. And mainly what I'm going to show you is how to remove and replace a lower seat cushion and cover. Now, this video pertains to 2006 all the way up to 2008 Dodge Ram pickups. Doesn't matter if it's a 1500, 2500, 3500 gas or diesel. If you follow these steps, you won't have any problems. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing I did was I went online to genosgarage.com and I ordered both my cushion and my cover. Now if you're familiar with my channel, you've heard me mention their name time and time again. Matter of fact, I've probably done about four or five different videos on products that they offer. And the reason why I like to use Genos is the fact that they specialize in Dodge Ram diesels. They don't deal with Fords, they don't deal with GM, they don't deal with Chevrolet, they don't deal with imports. Strictly Dodge Ram diesels. Now let me show you what I got from them when it came in the mail. So now that we've got the parts on hand, let's go ahead and open up the box and let's point out some important details of how this is better over the OEM that we're replacing. And something I want to show you right now is these green strips. The green strips have to do with hook and loop, which means Velcro. Now the cover slides over and attaches to the seat frame on the bottom side. Now in the middle, you're going to press down on your cover and let that Velcro attach it. And that gives you that nice tight fit instead of it just sitting on here nice and loose. It's going to roll down, be tucked in all the area where you see a green strip. Now the biggest improvements is on the back side. So let's flip it over. And right off the bat, you can see that there's some material attached to the bottom side. They've actually incorporated this into the foam. So wherever that metal seat frame makes contact, it's no longer touching the foam, it's touching the mesh material, which is a lot harder to wear through than the foam was. Now on the seats, you had a couple issues. I'm obviously pointing out that you wear through the cushion and the cover, but there's what they call left side lean. Over time, the cushion gets compressed and it doesn't rebound like it used to. So what they did is they raised this side of the cushion to kind of counteract that or prevent it from happening sooner than actually on the OEM version. So now we've talked about the cushion, let's go ahead and talk about the covers. Now the covers are available in two different materials. We've got cloth, we've got leather. We've also got the different colors of the interiors that the trucks came with. Now mine has that gray cloth material. If you look real close, you can see the pattern in it. That is an exact match for what came with the truck. On the side here, you got the same pattern. You got the squares, you got the no squares. Over here, you've got the carpet back. On the side, you've got all the OEM attachment points. We've got the flap on the side. We've got the hole for the recliner. We don't have the hole for the electric seats, but we'll be able to cut that in. On the back side, you can actually see the Velcro portions I was talking about. These will actually see inside of those green strips on the cushion. So just a little go around and look at the quality. Like I said, it's a direct match. It's as if you bought it from your Dodge dealer, even though it's no longer even available. They even got the carpet sides on here where it goes up against the console. So that's what we're gonna be installing. New cushions, new covers. Now in order to install the cushion and the cover, we're gonna have to remove the driver's side seat. And when I say seat, I'm talking about the lower portion as well as the seat back because they're bolted together. But luckily, we don't have to remove the entire assembly, which includes the passenger seat and the jump seat. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking four fasteners off underneath, and we're leaving the seat frame bolted to the vehicle. We're just going to be removing the lower portion and the back portion as one. Now, in order to get the upper and lower seat unbolted from the seat frame, we need access to the fasteners underneath. Now, if you've got power seats, what I recommend doing is go ahead and raise both the front and the rear of the seat all the way up. Now one thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be leaving this switch assembly in place. Same with this handle right here for the recline. Now that we've got the seat all the way up, we've got access to those fasteners for the seat frame. But there's also one more thing we've got to deal with that's related to this switch. Let me show you. Now being that this seat is electric, that means that we've got a connector underneath that we've got to disconnect. So what you need to do is you need to go around to the back side of the seat and start getting underneath and I'll show you where it is and how to unplug it. Now once you're under the vehicle, you'll see that connector a lot better. 
Now the connector itself has two locks that we've got to release. The first one being the red piece that you can clearly see. And once you release that, you'll squeeze in on the secondary and actually separate the two connectors. Now for now, we've got to slide the red piece out of the way. Now from time to time, it may be difficult. You may be able to move it with your fingers. If not, you have to be a pocket screwdriver or something pointed. And you can actually force it out of the way that way. So we're going to push it away. Now we've got it released. We're actually going to use that same lock and we're going to squeeze in. We're going to wiggle the connector and that's going to separate it. Now at this point, we're ready to go ahead and unbolt the lower seat portion from the frame. Now in order to do that, we've got four 13 millimeter nuts we've got to remove. Now up under here, we can get access to two of the front ones. We've got one located right here and we got another one on the opposite side about the same position. Again, they're 13 millimeter nuts. So go ahead and grab you a 13 millimeter socket, ratchet or cordless tool. Let's go ahead and take the two fasteners off the front. And once we got the first one removed, go ahead and jump on over to the second. Now from the rear of the seat, you can see the two 13 millimeter nuts a lot easier. It's not gonna be hard to get to. Let's go ahead and start taking those off. At this point, the seat's gonna be loose. It's just about ready to be picked up. So now that we've removed all four of those nuts from the lower portion of the seat, as well as disconnected all the electrical, we're pretty much ready to lift up on the seat and pull it out. Now one thing that'll help you get it out is we need to go ahead and, and recline the seat forward. Let's grab the handle, move it as far forward as it'll go. At that point, it's gonna give us enough clearance to get through the door opening. But there's some important things you need to pay attention to. First thing is we don't wanna damage the painted surface on the exterior of the vehicle as we're coming out. We also don't wanna scratch the plastic interior panels. And also we don't wanna damage the material on the seat or snag it on something. Yes, we're replacing the lower seat cushion and cover, but we're not doing it to the back of the seat. So now, go ahead and grab your seat, start wiggling it loose, pick up, and take it out of the vehicle. So now that we've got the seat removed, you can see the four holes where the studs go through. We're on the back side, we had the 13 millimeter nuts we took off. You can also see the electrical connector under here that we were working with as far as unplugging. Again, if it's electric seats, raise it all the way up. It gives you the room to get up under here. Manual seats, you don't have to worry about it. So luckily for us, we didn't have to take this entire assembly off. We just had to take four fasteners off and unplug a switch. So with that, let's go ahead and jump back to the seat and go ahead and work on that cushion and cover. Now what you're gonna need is a place to work on the seat. You could do it on the floor, you can do it on a workbench, or if you got a cart like this, that's perfect. Main thing is we need to put something down to protect the seat. In my case, I've got a cheap moving blanket that I purchased from Harbor Freight for like nine bucks. You can get an old comforter, you can get some towels, whatever it takes. Again, work on the floor, work on something. It's best to get as high as you can. It's a lot easier to work on. But again, we don't want to damage the new cover and we don't want to damage the seat back. Once we've done that, now we can grab the seat, we can lay it down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point out some important details underneath. So now that we've got the seat on the work surface, I want you to pay attention to how the cover attaches to the frame. This is the back side here. This is carpeted. Look right here at this plastic piece. You can grab it and pull it off. You can see the shape of it. Up under, we got another one. If you look around the perimeter, you'll see multiples of these. This is how it attaches to the frame. All you got to do is grab it. it. Might take a little bit of force and pull it off. If you look real close, you can see the hook style. It just grabs on there and it's actually very well held in place. Sometimes you can get them by hand, sometimes you got to use a tool. Now let me show you a tool that you can use that actually helps this out a lot. Now what I found that works best is a radiator hose pick. You may or may not have one. If you're a mechanic and you work on cars, most likely you do. If you don't have one, a little flat tip screwdriver will work or some needle nose pliers. What I like to do is I like to get between the frame and the plastic piece. I kind of work it down in there and it can actually work it off. Again, it fits down in there perfectly, as you can see. Just pull the tool off, and then I go around the perimeter, repeating the same process. Just grab the next one, insert your tool, whatever you got, and work it off. Just go around the perimeter, one at a time. 
after you finally get that last one off. Now the last one we're dealing with is the one that's at the front of the C. Now when we get that off, we're actually just going to grab the material, I'm just going to roll it towards the front, and that will unsnap it from the frame. Now the next thing we're going to be dealing with is the switch assembly if you've got power seats, and then the reclining handle, which is pretty much on every vehicle. Now they're attached with Phillips screws. Nothing special, nothing fancy is needed to take them loose. Grab your screwdriver, back them off. Same thing with this reclining handle. Now the reclining handle can go on one of two positions. You can put it on this way, or you could put it on this way. Again, we don't need the reclining handle pointed in that direction. It's not gonna work right. But that way, you can't put it on wrong. You can't put it like this, like this, or too far down. There's only one way it's gonna go on because it's keyed on the back side here, and the same with the shaft. So now that we've got the reclining handle removed, let's jump back over to the power seat switches. We back the screws all the way out, grab your bezel, sit it off to the side. Now if you look right here, you're gonna notice something. There's actually a square hole cut out for the switch. If you grab your replacement cover, you'll notice there is no square hole. There's a hole for the reclining handle and shaft, but not for the switch. It just made more sense for them to make one cover, one part number. The only difference is whether or not you need to cut that out. Obviously, if you've got manual seats, you're not gonna have this. So now that we've got everything taken loose as far as the bezel and the reclining handle, we're gonna work on actually getting this cushion off and we're gonna leave the cover on it. Let me show you one last fastener we've got to take loose at the back of the seat. So I went ahead and flipped the seat to where it's actually facing down. Now you remember originally I showed you the back carpeted piece. We took this off. We took this off. There's one last piece right here. This material right here has two hooks. Now you could fight to separate them. All you really got to do is just slide it up. At this point we're pretty much ready to go ahead and take the cushion and the cover off. Now remember in which order these went, it is important. Like I told you before, take pictures if needed. If not, watch the video again. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and flip the seat back around. Put it on the seat back. That way we got access to the bottom side so we can actually work on separating that cushion. Now, all we're gonna do now is start pulling the cover away from the switches, for example, so that way that's not in the way. We can actually grab the seat cushion and start separating, pull it away. Now it's a little tight when it goes around the bottom side where the seat back is, but again, that's not going to be an issue. As we get it away, we can actually start rotating the seat. We can start working on that part of the seat as well. You can pull it apart and you can actually see where the pivot is for up here. We don't need to take any fasteners loose. We're actually going to be pushing the cover through. You can work it around. Squeeze it down in there, get your covers. Rotate the seat as you go. Take your time. Don't want anything to get kind of tied up or any, anything to get ripped. And that right there is the cushion and cover. All intact, that's what we're gonna be separating next. We're gonna be taking the cover off the lower portion of the cushion. So what you wanna do is you actually wanna kinda of pull the cover over the cushion. Just go around the perimeter. Just work it around. Because if you remember when I showed you the new one in the new cushion, as far as cover and cushion, I mentioned Velcro, right? That's exactly how it's attached. All we're gonna do now is just pull up. Go all the way around. Now, remember, we don't need this cushion, we don't need this cover. I really don't need to separate it, but I wanted to show you how it is attached for the OEM version. Again, the replacement's gonna be the same way. I just wanted to show you in case you ever wanted to take a cover off but keep your original cushion or vice versa that this is the process and this is what we're replacing and why we're replacing as you can see we get a hole all the way through it's not a burn hole it's just rubbing over time and the actual foam right here is compressed it's no longer got that little curve to it like the other side does so that's what we're going to be taking care of now we're going to grab our new cushion new cover and start working on getting that together if you get electric seats, there's one more thing that we've got to modify. Not only do we have to cut the cover like I showed you, but we got to modify the cushion. This area right here. Manual seats, you leave it alone. 
power seats, we've got to cut this out. And you can do it with something like just a razor blade. So all I'm going to do is follow the line or the shape and just go through. The razor blade is real quick at cutting through this. Just remember, don't, don't cut yourself. The last thing you need to do is go to the hospital and get stitches. And this doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to be hidden by the cover. But it does have to come off because that's where the switch sits. You get done cutting on this side, you need to flip it over, make that final cut over there. And that right there will give us the access we need for the switch. So we're done with modifying the cushion. Now let's go ahead and work on getting the cover on the cushion. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your cover. We're actually gonna fold it inside out. That's gonna allow us to actually install it on the cushion a lot better. Because mainly what we're gonna start with is right here on the back side. These white strips that I pointed out before. Remember, they go on the green strips, which is actually part of the Velcro system. So we're gonna start at the back side here. We're gonna fold it over. And we're gonna insert it down into this strip right here. And we're gonna line it up, center it, press down. Now we can actually start folding the cover over by holding it in place. And we'll work on getting the sides done next. All you got to do then is fold the flap out of the way, the white piece, tuck it down in there onto the green little strip, and then do the exact same thing on the opposite side. At this point, we're ready to go ahead and start pulling the cover over. What we're going to do is we're going to grab a corner, hold it tight, stretch it, and pull it around making sure that we pull it nice and tight and just roll it over on the cushion get it around the bottom edge all the way around then you can always come back and tuck the cushion and cover together so that, that velcro is held in place and we're going to flip it over and make sure we got everything nice and tight we don't want to see any foam being further above the cover, so the cover needs to be further up. So we'll tuck it down in there. Just work your way around the perimeter, taking your time. Remember, the cover is going to be nice and tight once it fastens to the seat frame or the metal portion of it. For now, we just want to make sure that it's properly seated on the cushion. So now that I've got the cover on the cushion, I'm ready to go ahead and cut that rectangle out for the switch assembly. Again, only if you got electric seats. We already got the hole here for the recliner. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our old cover. We're gonna line up the hole at the recliner shaft where handle goes through. Get that lined up real nice. We'll line up the seam here. We'll actually kind of drape the original cover over the replacement. Make sure everything's lining up real good. We'll gonna grab a permanent marker. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to trace out where I want it to be. It doesn't have to be too fancy. Again, we're going to follow it back up with a razor blade, a pair of scissors, whatever you've got. Just kind of go on down the line here until you get a nice little template or nice little rectangle shape that we can use to cut. And the reason why I do it while it's on the cushion is I've got some kind of backing, something to get it nice and taut. So I've got something to work with. It's kind of hard to lay it down on things. Here I can actually just lay it there and cut and trim. And what I recommend doing is starting in the corners. Make a little cut. It'll take multiple passes depending on how sharp your razor blade is. Remember, stitches are not our friends. We don't want to cut ourselves. We'll follow it back up over here. Making sure that we don't go too far with it. We can always cut a little, but if we cut too much, this cover is useless. There we have it. Got the opening for the switch. And it'll line up with the opening on the foam once we stretch it and pull it on that seat frame. So now that we've got that cover on the cushion, we're ready to go ahead and put it back on the seat frame. 
So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and grab that lower cushion and cover. And what I've done is I folded the cover over towards the front. And what I need to do is I need to get this lip right here, this piece that's hanging over, tucked between the upper seat back and the lower frame. Once I do that, then I can start working the cover up in there. But for now, the cushion needs to go into place. So we're just gonna grab it, position it right on the lower portion here. Now one hand is probably gonna be working from the front of the seat, another one's gonna come up from the rear. And that's how you're actually gonna get that foam down in there, while at the same time pulling that foam and getting it under that upper seat back and around that frame. It may take some tugging, some pulling, slowly work it around. Watch out for the sharp edges. And then we're gonna repeat the same thing with the covers. I'd start with the felt portion first. You should be able to reach up in there with your hand, tuck it through, pull it out the back side. Same time, we're gonna fold up the carpet portion. Start pulling it through and giving it gentle tugs and pulling it through to make sure that we don't rip the material. Again, we need to make sure that the felt piece is up under. And then we can make sure that the carpet back piece is actually pulled through as well. So at this point, we're ready to grab the seat and flip it face down. So we've got access to the back side. So we can go ahead and attach the cover to the frame. So the first one I'm gonna start with is right here at the front. We've gotta fold this up. I'm gonna to have to pull on it and make sure that the cushion's in place, make sure the cover's nice and tight. And then I'm gonna roll it. Once I roll it, I'm gonna push and then push down at the same time until it snaps. Now that one's secured and we're gonna work our way around the perimeter. Now moving over to the side that's got the switch, we need to make sure we've got that positioned correctly and it's in its mount. I'm gonna grab that cover and pull it around. I'm gonna fold the flat back so you can actually see we're gonna be attaching this piece next. We're just gonna pull and get it around the edge of that metal frame and make sure it's hooked in place. And now we'll move to the one directly above. We're gonna grab it, pull tight. Again, get it on the metal frame. This one, you actually heard it snap in place. You're gonna pull it till it's all the way fastened and secure. Now we can actually work on the opposite side. This is just a repeat of what we just did. Pull it around, snap it on. Now at times you may have to squeeze everything, pull it nice and tight to get things to line up enough where you can lock it in place, especially this upper one. There we go. Now we got one last thing we gotta secure and that's the portion where the reclining assembly is or the seat back. Now, if you remember, this portion of the seat, we had three different things. We had a cover going side to side or a section of the uh, material that we had to attach. We also had another piece that went over and then we had another piece that went on top of all that. So again, we've got to do this in a specific order. So we're going to grab the left side of the seat cover. It's this piece right here and the right side. We're going to try to hook it together. This one we might have to actually pull kind of hard till it's secure. So now we got left and right sides firmly secured. They're actually nice and tight. We're gonna grab the other felt piece, make sure everything's tucked up under. We're gonna go for that metal frame again. Do a little tug, pull, get that in place. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this piece right here. That was the final piece and snap it in place. So now we've got all of the cover and the cushion attached to the seat frame. We're gonna move over to the switch and the reclining handle. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and grab that reclining handle. We're gonna push on the cover, and make sure that the shaft's all the way through, line it up like I showed you before how it's keyed. Grab that large Phillips screw, install it. We'll tighten that down by hand. Now we can move over to the switch. So what we've got to do is we've got to pull on the cover enough to get access to the screw holes. And once we line everything up, we're going to have to squeeze down pretty tight. And as we pull it down with the screws, it's actually going to compress the foam and then we're going to have a nice tight fit and then the switches will come all the way through the bezel like we need. 
Now these screws that hold the bezel on and the switch to the frame are actually a little hard to line up, so take your time. Don't be in a hurry. Once you've got it on, then we can start snuggling everything down. And we'll just move over to the other screw. So now that we've got the reclining handle and the switches mounted to the seat frame, all I want to do is just make sure that they're moving properly and that the bezel's not stopping it. Now we're ready to go ahead and install this assembly back in the truck. Now as we're going back in with the seat, we need to take the same exact precautions we did when taking it out. We don't want to damage the paint on the truck, we don't want to damage the plastic, and we certainly don't want to damage the material on the seat. So just take your time. Now it's just going to be a matter of lining things up and wiggling it in place. And once you've got it there, go ahead and grab your fasteners and start them on the studs. Now from the rear, we're gonna install the last two 13 millimeter nuts. Now there's a torque spec on these. You're looking at 18 foot pounds. So if you wanna follow the correct procedure for torquing these things down, grab your torque wrench and set it to 18 foot pounds. Now if you've got manual seats, you're pretty much done. Now, if you've got electric seats, well, we've still got that one electrical connector that we've got to plug back in. We need to reach up in here, line it up, slide it in until we hear an audible click, and we need to press in on that secondary lock, that red piece again. At that point, if you've got power seats, you're done as well. All we're going to do at that point now is just make sure that everything works properly. So just to make sure nothing's messed up, we're going to go up and down to see frontwards, backwards. If it's manual, slide it front to back. And then check your reclining. Make sure all that's working as well. Otherwise, at that point, the installation is done. And this right here is the final product. As you can see, we've got a nice tight fit. It's got the factory pattern. The only difference is this is clean and this now looks to be filthy. Nonetheless, no one could tell that this is not OEM. It's that good of quality. So that right there pretty much shows you everything you need to know when it comes to removing the lower seat cushion and cover. Also, I told you where you can go to purchase it. So make sure to head over to genosgarage.com and check out everything that they've got. They mainly deal with the diesel as far as the Cummins Ram pickups. But again, when it comes to interior work and accessories, it doesn't matter what engine you have. They do cover all the Ram pickups. So if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up on YouTube. Don't forget, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you got any comments or suggestions about anything you saw in today's video, or anything Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, or Ram related, you can leave something in the comments below, or you can email me at david at motorcitymechanic.com. Also, if you like to shop on Amazon, please scroll down into the description below this video. And there's a link. Click on that link and make that your Amazon homepage. And anytime you make any purchases, it'll help support this channel. Once again, everybody, thanks for always watching.